Hey guys, this is a stream from one of my Facebook live streams. If there's a topic discussed here that you'd like to know more about, comment down below and who knows, I might use it as a topic for a future stream or YouTube video. So if you have any questions, let me know down below and enjoy. We're gonna be going over ab exercises. If you're just looking at this and you're watching a replay, and this is the replay, not the live version, uh, make sure that you check the description. It's gonna tell you exactly where to jump to and that's, that point that you jump to is exactly where I'm gonna start talking about the ab exercises. I'm gonna do some review before that though. We're gonna do a little bit of housekeeping, some updates, and wait for more people to join the stream, and then we're gonna jump right into how to sizzle that six pack. Alrighty, I'll catch you guys in a little bit. All right, so let's talk about ab exercises, right? Let's just kinda go right into it here. So I got an article and I'm gonna pull it up real quick here because I think it's kind of interesting. It shows a whole bunch of ab exercises and I kind of like this because it shows you kind of like an example of like, like this is literally the first result you get in Google for ab exercises. And I figure this is what most people are gonna encounter when they try to look stuff up. So, you know, like whatever this is, dailyburn.com, okay? It's like a fitness blog thing and it's, it's cute. It's got this nice little layout and everything like that. And they show you like all these exercises, okay? But it's like, they also show you some weird, like since they're trying to give you 50 exercises there's a lot of filler in there so it's like when you have all these exercises you got to see like which ones are good for you um, and which ones are just kind of like too exotic and too trying to be too different oh here's the one I love okay well hold on a second Did I switch over oh sorry let me switch over for you guys okay sorry about that so I was trying to switch to this view uh, how did which way is it it's this way okay over here look at look at this exercise hold on a second I'll go back and Okay, what, what is she doing here? I mean, I get this. It's like she's building up her, her shoulder strength and stuff like this, but this is the kind of stuff where it's like, okay, just you're, you're doing like a one-arm plank and then she's just kind of flicking her arm around, okay? And that's the kind of stuff that just bothers me. It's like, it's just, you're trying to be too, too cute with your exercises. If you do this kind of stuff instead of doing like um, crunches and stuff like that, you'll, uh, you won't get as good results now. Let's see how far it takes before they get to crunches here. Where's crunches? So it's this whole, you gotta go through the whole second page just to get to the crunches and sit-ups. Now this is where your bread and butter is when you're trying to do ab exercises, is uh, crunches and sit-ups. They have like all these exotic exercises. Look at, she's got a BOSU ball and she's doing like all this weird stuff. It's like, um, she's got some dumbbells, probably doing renegade rows and stuff. It's like, uh, the main thing that you're gonna wanna do are just crunches. Look at, look at this, what is this? She's got one arm, one foot over the other. This guy's got like, what is this? Not a kettlebell. He's got something he needs to be propped up on. It just, it's, it, it baffles me sometimes. So I just see, I just see articles like this, and I just go, I just kind of roll my eyes a little bit. You know what I could probably do? Um, I probably should just set it up so you guys can see my notes in the future. But let me give you, let me give you some examples. Okay, so let's, let, let's go to the, let's go, let's go to the crunches here. Crunches and sit-ups. Okay, so first of all, what you guys gotta know about abs is that, um, let, let me get you, let, let me give you like a anatomy lesson here, okay? The On the rectus abdominis muscle, okay? Your rectus abdominis, that's your six pack, okay? So let's get some images out here. Let's try to learn a thing or two. Okay, so if you, if you let's zoom in a little bit here, and I know I'm probably just below this guy. I can't see myself, but I'm guessing he's like right above me, okay? So you got these upper abs here, okay? Whenever you're bringing your upper body down to your lower body, that's gonna work like, like a crunch. That's always gonna work more your upper upper abs. You're gonna feel a little bit more. Anytime that you're trying to bring your lower body, like your legs, up to your upper body, that's gonna work the lower abs, okay? Now technically, you're always gonna use all of your abs all the time. It's just like, where are you trying to emphasize? So like last week, I had my mom join the stream, and she asked me, hey, what, what how can I work these lower abs, like the lower gut? Uh, muscles and and you're usually gonna do like leg lifts for that and that's also gonna work the hip flexors so let's see if we can get like another view here um, that shows the hip flexors I don't think they'll show the hip flexors with it mm, probably not let me zoom back out here well your hip flexor muscles let me show you real fast a lot of people they get really tight hip flexors because they're sitting all day So these are your hip flexor muscles. Wow, that's a really blurry picture. Let me see if I can find something better. Um, 
here, here's a good here's a good shot okay here's your hip flexor muscles they're all in the front okay so they grab your your femur bone which is your big leg bone and they bring it up towards your chest right so they they help uh, flex your hip by bringing it up closer and you see you've got the psoas major psoas minor um, the iliacus so these all combine together into the, what's called the iliopsoas muscle Anyway, so if you got really tight psoas, <laughs> actually, I think there's a there's a, a thing there's a product out there called So Right. It's spelled P O P S O A So Right. Let me see, So Right. Yeah, and it's actually this little device that's meant to stretch out your hip flexors. So um, as you can see right here, so like this guy would be. It looks like he's just crushing his. Uh, <clears throat> family jewels there, but actually um, he's trying to massage his hip flexors, okay? Now these hip flexors, um, we're gonna wanna try to avoid using them too much. So if you only do leg lift exercises, you might end up overtraining your hip flexors. Um, so what we're gonna wanna try to do, let me just go back here. We're gonna stick with the rectus abdominis, okay? Now there's, the rectus abdominis is your six pack muscle, okay? So your six pack right here. But you also have um, some oblique muscles too. So the obliques, um, uh, let's say obliques. Oh uh, boy, there's just a bunch of so, weird pictures on here. But the obliques are on the side. Now they run at a sideward angle. So um, you can't just do straight up and down crunches and expect to get complete uh, complete core development. You also need to train these uh, these internal and external obliques. So the internal obliques, let me see if I can just get this guy. This guy looks pretty shredded. Okay, so like right here, uh, the ones that are running down, like kind of like you're putting your hands in your pocket, those are the external obliques, okay? And then you have the internal obliques, which are kind of obscured right now, but they actually run in the opposite direction. Let's see if we can get a better picture here. That is not a good exercise for uh, working the obliques. You see, you know one, here's, here's, here's a little tip, okay? Let me make sure that I'm still with you guys. You guys still with me? Okay. I was just making sure everybody's still, still with me and we're still good. Okay, so let's go back to um, back to our image here. <laughs> this this is this is hilarious that they show train your obliques for a killer core. Okay, this is a bunch of crap. Um, pardon my French, but look at this guy. He's just doing a, a dumbbell side bend. Okay, he's just tilting to one side, and that's not going to engage your obliques. Yes, it will engage the obliques somewhat, but that's not the function of the obliques. The function of the obliques is to rotate to help with rotation, like throwing a ball or swinging a bat and so on and so forth, okay? Just look at, if you ever get confused, just look at how these muscles run. Do they run up and down like the abs do? No, they do not. So they don't help with side bending. They help with uh, rotation stuff. So uh, I talked about it last week, the bicycle crunch okay, is a great exercise because it's gonna get all those muscles, okay? So I'm a really big fan of this exercise because, hold on one sec. Uh, type, we need a GIF image here. Okay, let's see how this girl's got. There you go. Okay, so as she's doing this, she's not only like uh, doing hip flexion, which is gonna engage her, you know, it's gonna engage the lower abs and the rectus abdominis. It's also, there's a twisting component. So she's rotating her upper body, her thoracic region of her spine. Let's see if this guy gets a little bit, he's probably gonna do more of a twist. Oh, that's a little choppy. Let's see if we can get a better one. Okay, look, look, look at his upper body is also rotating with it. And by, let me zoom in a little bit more. And that's gonna engage these external obliques on the right side and then the internal obliques on the left side. And then when he goes the other way, when he's lifting up this leg, like, let, let's, let's look at the action of his right arm here, okay? The right arm is going from right to left, okay? So when he's doing the right to left kind of motion, bringing his elbow to his left knee, that's gonna get the right internal oblique, or sorry, the right external oblique on the right side and the left internal oblique on the left side. And that's how you do them in combination with one another. So that's why the bicycle crunch is such a great exercise because it engages everything. Now the only thing that we didn't cover with our ab anatomy is those deep core muscles, okay? So that's like your transverse abdominis, right? This is the one that technically, if you don't, this is the one that's like underneath your abs, like your six pack, okay? 
So this one draws in the contents of the abdomen. It's its only function. Notice this is not striated, like it, there's no six pack, there's no pack. It's just a one pack, okay? And all it does is squeeze everything in. So if you do like a, what's called a stomach vacuum and you just suck your gut in, that's the muscle that does it. And what's interesting is that this is the only muscle that touches your spine. So if you have lower back pain, this is the muscle that you wanna train a lot. So you wanna do certain exercises. Let's see if she's doing what I think she's doing. Mm, yeah, I think she's trying to do like, uh, like, kind of like a Kegel with the pelvic floor activation. So this muscle, it's actually funny, the, rec the, the oh, this is a really trippy picture. This muscle, you see it actually goes really far down. Let me see if I can show you guys here. It goes really far down and actually inserts onto your pelvis, okay? And that's where you have all your pelvic floor muscles too. Like if you're trying to prevent yourself from going to the bathroom and you do like a Kegel exercise, that's gonna activate those Kegel muscles. So actually when you're doing things where you draw your stomach in and you kind of flex those muscles like you're trying not to pee, that's what's gonna uh, activate everything together. Let me go back for one sec because I wanna see if anybody else has joined. If you guys have any questions, by the way, you want me to stop and explain something, let me know, okay? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be giving you guys like lots of, lots of examples of uh, different ab exercises you could do, but I thought the bicycle crunch was a very good starting point because it shows, it shows everything. It shows you working the upper abs because you're doing the crunch and you work the lower abs because you're lifting the legs in, in the hip flexion and then you're rotating as well. So all three of those components are covered. Now technically, you engage your abs whenever you do like any kind of bracing activity. So if you're doing isometric stuff like a plank, for example, and you're planking, let's, let's, let me uh, bring that up real quick. Let's say you're doing something like a plank, okay? Planks aren't, that, aren't really that hard, but they are good for trying to practice drawing your belly in, okay? So you just don't want your gut hanging out. Let's see, she's doing a good one right here. Well, obviously you don't want to flop down like that. She's showing that. I actually don't need a GIF of this one. I don't need a GIF image of a plank. I just need a static, static image. Uh, that's going to be the same girl, isn't it? Okay. Uh, she's doing it from her shoulders. Now you can do you can do planks from your shoulders, but it's gonna it's gonna work a lot more your shoulders than your abs. If you go down into your elbows like this guy, then you're gonna really engage the abs more because you're not able to use your shoulder muscles to stabilize as much. You have to use your ab muscles. But when you do this, let's see this girl right here. She's actually drawing her stomach in, so that's gonna work the transverse abdominis muscle. Okay. Another thing that you can do work the transverse abdominis though is like a stomach vacuum. Okay. This is what I was kind of getting at before. Uh, stomach vacuum is it's kind of gross looking sort of once you get really good at it, but look, look at this guy. This is like, look how much he's sucking everything in. He's got obviously a six pack, but he's also been training his transverse abdominis, that is really, that really deep muscle, and he's able to draw everything in. Look, see, he's got a six pack, okay? So we see the rectus abdominis, but then we also see the transverse abdominis being engaged. So, um, uh, anyways, that's the uh, that's kind of what I was getting at with that. And there's the obliques, right? I might leave that up just so that we got uh, something to work with here. Um, yeah. But I think I think what I'm gonna do, I'll just I'll just kind of leave up. I'll leave up kind of this image here as I'm talking, and then I'll, I'll kind of I'll kind of pull stuff up as as we go here. Okay. So I got my handy dandy phone and we're gonna go through um, some exercises, okay? I'm gonna go through all the ones that I like first, and then we're gonna go through uh, the ones that I don't like because they just don't make any sense. It'll be a lot easier to see, uh, oh, hold on, I gotta swipe this away. I got so many notifications. It'll be easier to see the mistakes once I show you like how the good ones are effective, and then you, if we go to the ineffective ones, you'll see how it's just not doing a whole lot for you, okay? Because um, you just think about the anatomy and the func the physiology, which is the function of the muscle. And if, if you don't see how, like literally, like if you look at all the muscles in your body and you see the, where the fibers run, if you know where the fibers run, you know exactly what movements will engage them. Oh, you know what? I forgot to talk about that, that side bend earlier. Uh, remind me to get to the side bends again. I will talk about the side bends. But, um, oh, this is, sorry, this is dragging along my mic. But I will talk about the side bending earlier because that's really, everybody wants to get the, uh, like, what do they call it? The muffin top? Yeah, the muffin top, the love handles and stuff like that, like right here. And so they do those side bends and it's like, it's not gonna do anything for you. Because the first the, the first reason you have a muscle, um, the reason why you have a muffin top is because you have a fat deposition right there. 
It's not because you haven't had that muscle developed. Because you can spot control the muscle. Like you can have the most shredded six pack that, you know, and that's what people don't get is like, you have six pack muscles. Like everybody has these muscles. Like if I were to just strip away all the fat, you might not see like these massive cut muscles, but you definitely would see a six pack on people. And if you just peel away the layers of fat, you eventually get to the muscle, okay? But the reason why I have muffin tops and, and people have guts and stuff like that is because there's visceral fat that's covering it, okay? And that's the dangerous fat, the fat that is that can uh, encroach upon your organs and cause organ problems and, and is related to fatty liver disease and all these comorbidities and comortalities uh, and stuff like that. So you don't want to have uh, belly, belly fat. Belly fat is bad. You know, if you have a little bit of flab underneath your arms or you have, uh, you know, some fat deposited, you know, the subcutaneous fat just below your skin, that's no problem. But the stuff on your gut, that is the stuff that's very strongly correlated with all-cause mortality. So you don't want to have that. Anyways, that being said, like, <laughs> if you guys if you guys don't, don't believe me too, it's like, um, I've dissected cadavers, okay? And, like, there was this one guy, let me go back to story time here for a second, okay? Okay, so anyways, let's get back to the exercises. Sorry about that. And let's talk about, I'm just going to blow through the, the list here, okay? So the first exercise I want to talk about is how to train the lower abs, because that's what my mom asked about before. She wanted to know how to train the lower gut stuff. So there's that whole leg lift circuit that we did before. So the leg lift circuit is as follows, okay? We got anything where you're bringing your, you have your legs straight and you're bringing them up to your body. Your legs don't have to be straight, but that's what makes it harder. So we got flutter kicks, okay? I'll leave this open with the settings. Tool set to type would be GIF, okay. So doing flutter kicks, okay? Now this is training the lower abs because you're doing hip flexion. So you're working your hip flexors, but you're also training the lower abs, okay? And then also we have, let's see, scissor kicks. How about we just swap this out, scissor kicks. And we see this guy going in here. Okay, now all these exercises, now he's, he's actually doing flutter, flutter kicks here. Scissor kicks is where you go in and out. Well, I don't know why she's got her, her hips externally rotated there. That's not necessary. You see a bunch of weird crap uh, when she wants to go online. She's got her hips externally rotated, which I guess she's trying to shut off her, the involvement of her hip flexors. That's not too bad. Okay, because like sometimes you'll see people do ab crunches and they'll do ab crunches with like hips rotated. I don't even know what you call it. It's, um, let's say like, I think they do it in CrossFit. Let me see here. I, at least this is how we taught it when I did CrossFit, because I used to help teach CrossFit classes. I wasn't a certified instructor, but I used to help run them at the University of Michigan Flint. And, uh, and they had like a really nice, they called it U-Fit instead of CrossFit, because it was like not as hardcore. I don't know, but basically you open up your, it's kind of like, butter. maybe they call it like a butterfly crunch, because it's kind of like you open up like a butterfly. I don't really ever do these. Uh, here we go. Okay, so like, see this guy? He's technically doing this, like, he has his hips externally rotated, which means that he has them opened up, okay? And technically when you do that, it, it makes it, the reason why you do an ab crunch this way is because it, it, it makes it so that your hip flexors don't take over. Because your hip flexors are right in front, and if you open up your hips, then it doesn't, the, the muscles don't line up for like, when they're splayed, when the legs are splayed out like that. But when the legs are narrow and close together, you're going to use more of the hip flexors, okay? So if you want to, you can do that. But no, oh, here's the, here's one of my favorites, the, the bicycle crunch but you know I think that's why in this other the other one that we saw let's see where was it this girl whoop there she is I think that's why she had her her hips actually rotated because she's trying to shut off the involvement of her hip flexors but you can almost voluntarily try to uh, inhibit the hip flexors just by focusing on the abs once you actually develop your abs you can actually feel them so these are all part of the leg lift circuit. So if you do like a just a straight leg lift, let me see if I can back out of here. Okay, let's say like a leg, leg lift, ab exercise, something like that, okay? And you just raise them both together. This is, I mean, this is a great exercise. Now she's trying to really slowly control it all. And that's a great tip for ab exercises. You always wanna go nice and slow. You, you wanna make sure too though, if you are gonna go fast, it's your, your, like say you could swing your legs down really fast and you stop them at the bottom of the motion and then you have to stop that motion really fast. That would actually be good for engaging the abs but just swinging your legs up like I don't know if I can find maybe a bad 
a bad example. Let's see if she, how she, this, this girl's doing it. Nope, she's nice and controlled. A lot of times you'll see people's hips come off the floor there. And if your hips come off the floor, it's usually because you have momentum. She's doing a single leg version. That's, let's see if this girl does it. Nope, she's actually, they're all doing it pretty good. So, but I see it all the time. People, when they do this, this leg lift, they just, they, they let their butt lift off the ground. They just flick it up there and let, they just let it rock. Like it's just a, like swinging a ball and chain all over the place. Just a lot, a lot of momentum and not controlled. So anyways, you got that one leg lift that and then you can you can add that with weights okay so like if you i know this is all body weight stuff but you could you could add a weight on there and you know what i really like doing my favorite way to do a leg lift you know there's there's other variations and anything where you bring your legs up like that is going to cause your abs to activate because it's going to be uh doing an anti anti extension kind of movement so leg lift with the ball the swiss ball okay now this technically isn't just body weight but if you have something that you can put on here like right here that now that is a great exercise because not well, this guy's going really fast also notice just like how i taught you guys at the gym you want to put your hands underneath your butt that'll prevent your pelvis from rotating downwards and hurting your lower back like right here you don't want to have an arch on your lower back in fact whenever you do ab exercises make sure that you don't let an arch form in your lower back Okay, so the the other reason why I like this not only because I, I like this not only because the ball weighs something and he, oh, that that just looks tiring to have, to have that guy keep doing it. But um, let's see if we can find somebody else doing it. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess he's the only guy who's really doing it. I think they actually had a pass through exercise. Let's see if she's doing it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. The reason why the reason why this works is not only does the ball weigh something, so you have to actually resist the ball, but also you can squeeze your adductors. That's your adductors, okay? So your hip adductors. Let's see. Let's see if I can show you those. That's on like the inside of your thigh, okay? See these muscles right here? You actually have several. There's multiple adductor muscles. There's like four of them that are right here. It's kind of hard to tease them apart right here, but um, they all bring when. When you squeeze your legs together to try to crush something in between your thighs, such as a ball, like this guy's doing, it helps to engage the adductors. And that's important because if you notice where the adductors insert, they insert on the pelvis. And since they're on the pelvis, it stabilizes your pelvis. And again, we want pelvic stability because if you have a stable pelvis, it'll make it easier for you to engage your ab muscles because this this pelvis here is very stable. It's a, it's a good place to pull on. It's not all loosey-goosey. So by engaging the adductors and squeezing, you can actually, let's see if we can go over here. Let's see if I can do like leg lift with, with a dumbbell or something like that. Dumbbells, okay. Well, I think you guys could see what I'm talking about with the other one. That's not really a good example. Just imagine that instead of this, you had like a dumbbell or something like that. Now you could do that. It's, it's a little wonky. It's a little awkward. I'd, I'd recommend trying it with a ball because you really don't need the weight, especially. So you can use a bigger ball, a bigger, heavier ball, or like a medicine ball. Let's see. Let's say medicine, medicine ball. Because exercise is medicine, am I right? Nope. Doesn't look like they're doing it. This guy's probably doing a pass, I'm guessing. Nope. He's just doing a crunch. Anyways. So that's kind of like all your leg lift exercises. Let's see. And there's a whole bunch of plank variations. I think you guys know what planks are. You're just doing them from your elbows. That one's great because you can do that in between. It's not that hard. You can kind of do, just do a plank for a fixed interval and increase the time. Eventually you might need to make planks harder, okay? So you might need to do a plank. Whoops. You might need to do a plank with like a hollow body. Whoops. Hollow body plank. Something like that. So like a hollow body plank. The first of all, this is the hollow body position. And like, I love these exercises. Like do it, just, just try this, try it, try it at home. Just try holding this position right here. This is called the hollow body position. It's like a hollowed out canoe. Okay. Just holding that is a really good, it's kind of like the reciprocal of a plank. So you got the planks here. Now here's a guy doing a hollow body plank. It looks like he has kind of like a hunchback kind of thing going on here, but actually that is that is okay. Cause you wanna have a bend here in your front of your body so that you're engaging the abs. So by doing this, he's actually protracting his shoulders by pushing them there. He's pushing his back out kind of like this kyphotic curvature, which is like the hunchback kind of look. Okay, that's gonna help you get this hollow body position just like you are when you're doing, whoops. 
just like this guy's doing right here and just like just like this guy's doing right here so ho the hollow body hold that's actually that'll be in the notes that i give you guys for this epi episode how to do hollow body planks so those are examples of isometric exercises isometrics are just where you just there's no movement occurring you just hold it and it's nice to be able to do hollow hollow body holds and to do hollow body planks and things like that in between all of your movement exercises. So let's, let's say you do that leg lift circuit and then you're trying to rest in between. Instead of just resting, you could do planks or you could do the hollow body planks and that'd be a great filler. Okay, and then we have all of our oblique exercises we gotta hit. So we talked about a lot about uh, these exercises, but what about the what about these muscle, muscles here that really aren't gonna help with the muffin top, but once that muffin top's gone, man, you're gonna look chiseled. Because what this does, having these muscles, it just makes, like, it just, it, it kind of frames the abs and makes them look really good. Like, look at this, this extra little, it kind of like, it kind of points down and says, hey, check out my abs, you know what I'm saying? Damn, that girl shredded. So let's talk about the obliques, okay, shall we? Now, I usually don't focus on the obliques when I'm training people that much, unless, unless we've already covered the basics, because unless you've, like, you don't need to, like, unless somebody's really worried about the muffin top thing, and I, I, I can tell them all I want that, you know, we don't need to worry about it, just they feel better working on their obliques. So I say, okay, I'll show you the oblique exercises, but really I would focus on the six pack before I work on the obliques. Unless you're an athlete, because athletes really need obliques for any of these twisting exercises. Okay, so I teach you guys those functional ab exercises as well. Okay, so let's talk about Russian twists. Okay, so the Russian twists is right here. So this is an example of that rotation, okay? So let's see if, oh, let's see if we can get a uh, GIF here. Setting tools, um, GIFs, okay. See, this is the crap that I was like, I don't know. It's just, it's too much. Okay, so the, this guy's trying to do a cute little variation. He's doing these little punches or something like that. It's like, he's not getting enough rotation. Since he's punching out here, he's not rotating enough. Now let's see him do this one if he's getting better. Now look at this. He's getting more thoracic rotation. His thoracic cavity, which is the, let me see. When I, let me give you guys some context here. Let's say thoracic rotation. Okay, so like this is thoracic rotation right here. Okay, see how he's like, it's, it's moving this part of your spine. I should have just said thoracic spine. I don't know why I didn't just type that in. Thoracic spine, okay. Your thoracic spine, see this lit up part right here? Okay, that's the part that you want to move. Okay, so here's your lumbar spine, which is your lower back, but this is the part that you wanna move for, uh, cause that's where the obliques are, the, the top of the obliques are, okay? So they cause movement. They grab they grab the rib cage and they rotate it, okay? So if we wanna, if we wanna move our thoracic spine here, he's getting a lot more thoracic rotation by doing this than doing this crap. This is just like, oh, I wanna be cute and I wanna do little punches. You know, I feel like I'm being a fighter. Now this this chick's got a she's got dumbbells, and that's how a lot of people do it. They use uh, they use medicine balls like this. Okay, but look at he's just kind of like I think he's doing this because he actually really wants to like slam the ball. Now that's a, actually okay, but if you if you if you get too crazy with this, it's it's too jarring. It's kind of like there's a lot of momentum, and uh, you can actually kind of bounce the ball a little bit, which I'm not really a fan of because if you're bouncing the ball, it's using the momentum of the ball bouncing. So this is, she's doing a nice and controlled, but really I don't think you need to do it with the medicine ball because just the act of rotating itself should be enough to get you to really engage. Now this is kind of a lame version, like just keeping yourself up like this is engaging the abs, but if you lift the, the legs off the floor, this girl's doing a really good job. She's got her legs lifted, so she's getting those lower abs activated because she's doing the a leg lift and she's adding in rotation. So I, I love when you're combining those two together and it's all under control. You always wanna go slow and your abs are slow twitch muscle fibers, meaning they, they do better, they contract better when they are slowly contracting. They're not explosive fast twitch muscle fibers, like for example, some of your leg, big leg muscles that you need to propel yourself forward for a sprint, okay? Let me check to see how we're all doing. Oh, Olivia's trying to watch it live. Hmm, I'm gonna try to get my friend Olivia to join. Let's see, click on my page. Let's see if, we can, let's see if I can get Olivia to join here real quick. She's having a little Okay, anyways, we'll go back to it because I know that we gotta, we gotta continue on. Okay, Scott says, the Russian twists are great. I agree with that, Scott. Okay, back to the exercises here. So, Russian twist is great because you're, you're doing kind of like an isometric leg lift 
all the time. And then in addition to that, you're introducing movement. The next one I want to talk about are oblique crunches. Now this is the one that's kind of like a leg lift that's not isometric. There is movement. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, they might call it something different. Yeah, here we go. The side oblique crunch. What did I say? Oblique crunch? Yeah, so I said oblique crunches. I think I definitely butchered oblique though. Oblique crunches. Okay, now this is the easiest version, okay? This guy's just, he's doing it. It's, like, it's just like doing a regular crunch, except you just position yourself to the side so that you crunch. Now, this isn't the greatest thing in the world because like, okay, it's kind of like the dumbbell side bend, but this engages a lot more of the obliques than the dumbbell side bend. And you can also make this harder. I don't think we have a picture of it, but let me see if I can find a picture. If you keep your legs straight, Aha, I think she, this goes in. No. Okay, well you can just do the crunch portion here, but what I like to do to make it even harder is I like to lift the legs at the same time. And the reason why I like doing those kind of exercises is it engages the lower abs and the upper abs at the same time. That way you're getting the complete, all the different movements. The only thing you're missing out on is like rotation, but if you're working the sides, you'll get a little bit more of those rotational muscles, the obliques, by working that. How are we doing? Oh, no Bulgarians? Yeah, no Bulgarian squat. It, you know, I called you squat. Scott, <laughs> this is a squat cast. Oh, okay, hanging oblique raises. That's a good one, Willie. What's up, Willie? Willie just joined. And it's, I don't know. I, don't, I think that, yeah, it deserves a round of applause. There we go, yeah. Yes. People, the people love Willie. So like a hanging oblique raise. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Actually, we haven't gotten to the hanging exercises yet. Most of these are supposed to be, let me see, hanging, oh, bleep. Most of these are like people do like the hanging knee tucks and stuff like that. These are really hard, okay? So they're definitely not your beginner exercise, but if you hang from a bar, you can do those same kind of exercises by you know, going to the side and trying to work the obliques. Most people though do the hanging knee tucks as a start, okay? And a lot of us trainers use this one all the time. It's very difficult just bringing yourself up like that. So it's like doing a leg lift, but it also will build your upper body strength too from like having to hold on there. And since you don't have the stability of something behind you, like for example, the captain's chair here, this is definitely not a, these are no longer body weight exercises, okay? Today is supposed to be about body weight exercises. But you see, this is stabilizing behind her. And if you want to get rid of that pelvic stability, your abs can work even harder by removing that thing behind you. Let's see if we can get a side profile view of someone doing this. Not sure if we do. Yes. Anyways, this guy has nothing behind his pelvis, so there's nothing to stabilize it other than his hip flexors and his rectus abdominis. And then if you were to turn to the side a little bit, he'd have the obliques. So another one that I like to do is windmills. I, actually, you could call them, let's see what pops up with windmills for a second. That's not what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of wipers, wipers, ab. Okay, so like this one right here, this one, you're moving your legs, but it's in a rotary fashion. So let's see, this guy's going nice and slow. Right there is where you're gonna feel it the most. You're not gonna feel anything on top, and then, oh, it doesn't go all the way over to the side. But when you're all the way to the side, and you're stopping, and you're coming back, that's how you really get those obliques engaged. Although, you gotta really watch, because your lower back will lift off the floor here, and if you don't have a very strong lower back, that rotation is not gonna be under control, and that can really be a bummer for your lower back. Let's see if anybody else has joined. Okay, so those wipers are a very good exercise. And you can also attach weight to that, but I really don't think you need weight unless you're uh, looking for that extra challenge there. I don't use weight on them and never have really needed that. So wood chops is another great way to get rotation. Now this is, is not technically body weight either, but it's just another, another good example. Okay, if you get some cables here and you bring it across, although that, that's not the best picture because hmm. I like to do these with bands a lot of times but cables will do as well and uh, this is not a wood chop this is a pallet press we, we, we've done this at the gym with you guys whoops I did not mean to click on that but this is her an example of her doing an anti-rotation exercise so instead of actually rotating her body she's she's pressing her arms out in front of her and she's resisting rotation and that will also engage the obliques which are those side muscles, those rotary muscles. So that's another good one you can do. But again, that's not really body weight. So if you want to do like a, like a body weight, you could do like a side plank. Okay, side planks are also going to engage the obliques, okay? But then if you could add in, oh, I think he's doing it. Yes. If you can add in rotation, now this is where the you're cooking on the front burner right here. Right, Scott? Because Scott's cooking in his kitchen. 
if you could just rotate, that would, like the literal rotation, instead of just resisting rotation, you actually cause it. That's a really tough one. Whoops, I don't know what I was doing. So that should cover a lot. That should be uh, cover a lot of the body weight versions of the oblique. Oh, here's a buff dude. These guys have a funny fitness channel on YouTube if you ever want to watch them. This guy's actually taking a side plank and adding uh, the lift on there. That's a good idea. I don't do a ton of side planks, but every now and then I'll throw them in for, for fun. And uh, they're not that hard to do. And uh, if you can't do them, you can always go from your knees. Uh, she's doing the rotation again. But this is a very good oblique exercise, but you need to uh, definitely practice it because you can feel really awkward rotating because a lot of people just kind of flail around a little bit. So you got to definitely definitely master the side plank before you try to do a reach through. This guy's, not only is he doing uh, this with the, where she, she's doing just the elbow, which is where I think you should probably start with. This guy's so good at it that he's got complete control. He feels like he can reach through without having his arm brush up against the floor. Hanging knee tucks. Okay. I think me and Willie kind of hit on that. He mentioned the hanging knee tucks again. That's so technically that is body weight, even though you need a bar. But if you just have like a little portable over the door pull up bar like this, you could easily use that for the same kind of thing. You just hang from here, do your knee tucks, and if you need to rest your legs on something, you can rest it on a bench. Also, another thing to consider, let's see, mm, I don't think I'll be able to find a good example. You can use bands and stuff to assist you as well. But if you're ready for something harder, like like Willie, I know he does a lot. Of those. He does he does white. <laughs> Willie actually does more than just that. Willie does the wipers on the cane. So not only, you know how he could do the, the wipers this way on the floor? Well, he actually does them hanging, which is really hard. So if you're really looking for an extra challenge, this, I don't think it's really gonna load very well here, but this guy is doing wipers and he's also hanging from something. And a lot of people don't think about this, but actually when you're doing the pull-ups, if you take, if you do pull-ups, pull-ups with the, the legs straight, leg, leg, with leg raises? I'm not sure that's exactly what we're talking about. Okay, here's a good example. This guy's doing a pull-up and he's got his legs straight out in front of him. Now you don't need to have your legs literally straight out in front of you, but this is the L-sit position and it's a very difficult position to hold because once you get up to 90 degrees, your hip flexors can't help you at all. It's just the abs. And um, just doing the L-sit there is very difficult. But if you kind of maybe go halfway in between this, like not as far as that guy's going. Like I, when I do pull-ups, I don't have my legs straight out in front of me like this, but maybe at like a 45 degree angle. And that actually engages my abs. So I'm training my abs even when I'm doing pull-ups. That makes sense. So let me go back to the old. Margie says her head is spinning. Yeah, see there's a, there's a thousand uh, ab variations. They're all very good. You can get creative with whatever equipment you have or whatever your ability level is. There's always a way to scale them up, scale them down. But you definitely, there's definitely some stupid ones and I'll show you some of the stupid ones in a sec, okay? So we uh, talked about L-sits, we talked about hanging knee tucks, we talked about hollow body planks, rollouts. So that's another good one here. So let's say this technically isn't body weight because it uses more than just your body weight. It uses a uh, implement, it uses uh, the wheel, but ab wheel rollouts. This is a good, this is just another way of doing a crunch, okay? So my favorite way of doing a crunch, by the way, is just a V-sit uh, crunch, or, or not V-sit, v, v crunch. Okay, because when you're doing a V-up crunch, it's just a harder version of a crunch because <coughs> you're incorporating the leg lift at the same time as you're also doing a crunch. And and also, by the way, when you whenever you do the, I'm sorry if I'm skipping around a lot here, but um, whenever you're doing like your leg lifts, leg lift, ab exercises, okay? A lot of times you should not be like this, okay? Look at her, she's got her head on the floor. Now that's great if you're just starting out, right? You're just getting used to the exercise. But what I would prefer is that she's doing a little better. She's doing a crunch with the leg lift. So an isometric crunch is always maintained as you're engaging the lower abdominals as well by raising your legs. Here's another great exercise you can do with a partner. This is this is also going to be on the list I'm including. So he's actually stabilizing by pulling up on, he's almost trying to do like a pull down with his lats. So you can actually see his lats engaging here, but you grab onto there and then you do the leg lifts and they flick it down and they add some extra resistance. So there's, there's so many good variations here. There's really just, I mean, there's literally like, I think there's probably about 50 ab exercises that we're going to be covering and they're not the ones from this 50 ab exercise crap because we're not going to be doing I mean, look at all the, the great, act. first of all, all the great exercises we've done so far have been amazing. And then you compare it to something like this. The, what do they call it? This is not Sphinx, is it? 
reach reach around the clock planks. Really? Yes. So you could do you want to do a reach around the clock plank or do you want to do a serious leg lift or you know some kind of some kind of thruster move here? I mean, this is just so much better for I just don't want you guys to waste your time, okay? And this is all body weight stuff too. So, let's see if we can go back. Oblique sliders, yeah, I'm gonna get the slide, so I'm gonna like Willie's comment here. Willie just, let's go back to the main thing here. So Willie just pointed out oblique sliders. Now last time, I don't I don't know if Willie was here when we were talking about it, but I actually did talk about um, getting some sliders. So, ab sliders, I think we got this. I think we talked, I think we, yeah. So you can purchase these. This technically is now dipping into using equipment, but where the heck did they go? I thought I just had them. I have sliders. You get some of these pads here uh, if you're on a carpet and you just put your foot on there. See if you got somebody demonstrating. Okay, you can do your mountain climbers. You can do uh, anything where you're moving your, your feet and uh, you can slide along the floor there. Now, if you don't have these sliders, again, like I mentioned before, just use your socks. Get a thick pair of socks, some skating socks. Go in your uh, kitchen where you got some hardwood floor or some tile, and go ahead and slide up and down. That gym man. So here's these little the little pads here. Anytime you're doing stuff from your knees, especially the rollouts, it really helps to have something like this. Especially if you're doing your knee push-ups too, having a little spongy uh, thing like this really helps. You think I would have gotten the blue one because everything else I have is blue, but I wanted to see if this brand was good too. I think this is made by Gravity Fitness. Yeah, it is. I'm not sponsored by them, but I don't know if you can see that, but Gravity Fitness. But Airx is the ones you see in all the physical therapy clinics. And since it's a really popular brand name, it's actually like, I think it's like double the cost. So maybe like, maybe one and a half times the cost. So I just got one that was cheaper and it's worked really well. It's actually held up. I've had that for a couple of years now. Anyways, let's get back to the, let's see if we can get back to this. So one thing that you can do instead, if you don't have a, uh, a roller, like look at, they got all these, wow, these exotic, look at this thing, it's like a little kid's toy. That's actually really nice. I kind of like that, but $42, $42 was 55. The Brio wheel, more like bro wheel. This thing actually looks pretty cool. Oh, now that's a good idea. They actually added the bands on there. I've done that before, not with these specialized bands, but um, just taking a pair of bands and adding it to your rollouts. I'll show you how you can do that. Hold on a second. So another thing that you can do, if, if you if you have a barbell and you don't want to buy one of those, you can do a barbell ab rollout, okay? Let's see. So this guy's probably going to do it. Let's see if he loads up here for a sec. So it's the exact same principle, except what's cool about this one is that you can you can pick whatever's comfortable for your hands, whatever, whatever shoulder width that is comfortable for you. And there's also a weighted element to it too. So you can actually kind of pull back. You can you don't really load it up with heavy weight. Uh, adding more weight's not really gonna make it that much more difficult. So he's doing it right on the floor. He, if he, I wish he had something under his knees like this guy. Look at this guy's got a pad. He's doing it on a pad. Probably do it on a pad because your knees are gonna feel it otherwise. Let's see if we can save this with bands. Bands? One sec. Had a little something I had to take care of there. Well, I don't see it, but there's Jeff Cavalier. I bet you Jeff Cavalier has a video showing him how to do that. Oblique rollouts. I almost guarantee you. Let me see. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, this guy's got a great, a great channel. Athlean X. Gosh, I almost guarantee. Because I remember seeing a long time ago on his channel. Anyways, just imagine. Let me go back another couple notches here. Barbell ab rollout. So imagine this person's right here. Okay, I wish I could draw on the screen right here. Oh, okay, that's stupid. Okay, well, I'm glad that we saw this video. She's not strong enough to do it. She's collapsing right now. She can't go down all the way, so she shouldn't be going down that far. See, the, look at the, the angle of her lower, of her lumbar spine. That is dipping way too much. That makes me very uncomfortable watching that. That's, that's, you shouldn't do that unless you're strong enough. The other thing that you should do, and uh, you might want to try this, is have something behind your feet. Like go up against the wall or find a couch or something like that. And uh, don't go as far back. Like watch how far back he goes. Is this the guy from Buff Buff Dudes? I don't know. But he's going to go this far and then see how he sits back on his haunches? You don't want to do that. You want to stop right, right there. You don't want to go any further back than that. 
Okay, so just if you if you find yourself doing that, you're going to be rocking and rolling, and you're not going to be showing the the stability that you need. Oh, look at this guy showing off on his Bosu ball. That's actually not a bad idea if you have a Bosu but you don't have like um, a barbell pad. Oh gosh, there's really good Bosu crunches that you can do too. Let me just show you guys real quick the Bosu crunch. I love this thing. Bo Bosu crunch. We're probably going to go two hours. I, I can't stop. <laughs> Like this. I don't know what she's doing over here, but it's, it's kind of like this. Just, I love doing Bosu crunches that way. This, this one looks like it's a plank exercise, just doing that. That's, that seems needlessly complicated to me. Like, that, the balance aspect is distracting you from the strength aspect. Like, I, I get that your ab muscles are involved in stability, but that's a little bit too much stabilizing for them to even fully contract enough for you to develop them. Like, if you had to do this in real life for some reason, I'm sure that would be a functional exercise, but... Now this girl, whoa, she's doing good. She's actually bending all the way. She's actually far, well, she's doing pretty good. Her spine's in about the right spot. Most people can't find the right spot when they go to do stuff like this. I'll go through this when I go through my bad exercises. I'm almost to the bad exercises, by the way, because this is, an ex this is one of the bad ones right here that I hate people doing. Okay. I don't ha hate such a strong word. I just like that they do it. Okay, so uh, that covers rollouts with the barbell or the wheel. That's technically not body weight, but hey, what the heck. We got our cable rotational exercises that we covered before. Um, let's talk about, you know, we talked about the paloff press before. Okay. So you can do the paloff press. There's that girl from before. Let's see if I can find this. Okay, these are all good ones. Okay, that's not a paloff press. Okay, so she's got the band there, pulling her to the right. She's going way too fast. She should be exhaling. Ugh. Anyways, ugh. I can't stand it. So let's just, I need to be like there to instruct them right now to get the most out of it. You really got to milk these exercises. Go nice and slow. Don't don't be jerky. If you're going to be jerky, you got to come to a complete stop right after the jerk. And you got yeah, there has to be some point where you're slow and controlled. So that, that what I want to show you guys, cable rotational exercises with the band or the cable. Oh, the anti-extension press down. So like a straight arm, straight arm. Now, if you want to work your lats, you can do straight arm pull down like this. Oh, that's not what we're looking for here. Kind of hard to find exactly what you're looking for here. I think she's doing it right here. I don't know if it's gonna load, I'm not sure. But yeah, just keeping your arms straight out in front of you, but with a, with a close grip, a narrow grip, and pulling down, that'll engage your abs because it's an anti-extension exercise. You can also do it with the bands. Band? It's kind of like what this guy's doing right here. Yep, just like that, but that's using a lot of lats. I'd like to see his hands close together because the closer your hands are together, the more abs you'll use, the further grip that you use, the more your lats will be engaged. Huh. Anyways, not gonna worry about that too much. What was the other one I wanted to show? Oh, I can say like just like an ab pull down. Let's see if I can get that exercise. Okay, so like this. Okay, you can put the you could put it behind your head, put it in front of you. I know that's how Scott Herman. That's Scott Herman, by the way. He likes to do them behind the head. But you're kind of doing like these crunches with the weights. But that uses weights, so that doesn't qualify under today's body weight only kind of stuff. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. This is again using too much uh, too much equipment. Uh, we talked about contralateral reaches, so ab reaches, uh, straight leg. Uh, it's supposed to be straight leg. Oh, not straight leg, straight leg. Uh, kind of like a, a contralateral reach is when you reach the other side of your... Nope. Alright, I'm not going to be able to find this. It's just where you, re you you keep your legs straight and you reach to uh, the opposite opposite leg. So if you're reaching with your right arm, let me back out of this thing. So I was closing out of my sketchbook from earlier, the notes that we did. Okay, let me let me see. Margie says this is why we had love having you as a trainer. Your knowledge, aha, I love it. Thanks, guys. Okay, so uh, Sphinx to porn. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is the crap that I don't like now. We're gonna talk about. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk about. There, there's a number of ways we can spice things up. There's thrusters. There's dragon flags, twisting pistons, TRX pikes, planks, and knee tucks. So I'm not gonna talk about any of that stuff because that all uses equipment. Both two crunches also use equipment. But we're gonna talk a little bit more about that stuff. We talked about partner leg clicks. Okay, exercises I'm not a fan of. Sit ups. Okay. Let's see the sit up here. Sit up. The traditional sit up 
I'm not a fan. You know why I'm not a fan? Because it does not keep tension on you the whole time. Let's see if we can get a uh, thing here that shows us. Not, I don't want to see a curl up or a crunch. I want to see a sit up. This girl's kind of doing it. Let's see, like a military. Like in the military, they force you to do it this way, and I, I disagree with it. I think it's it's just a standard they've kept the whole time. Okay, so like let's say you got a guy here, and see how they have their the little slots for his feet. Okay, now why would you have to slot your feet there? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Now the the reason why you need that is because if your legs are locked down, you can stabilize your pelvis. Okay, and, and the reason why you can stabilize stabilize your pelvis is because you're using a huge amount of hip flexors. So like once you get past Right where this guy is, he's doing a curl up. So he, at this point, he could stop. He doesn't have to go any further up than that. Okay, if he goes up any further than this, his abs are already fully contracted. So the only thing that's gonna cause his upper body to go forward anymore is the contraction of his hip flexors in the front. And those hip flexors are gonna take over. And then all of a sudden you got a hip flexor exercise. And we're not trying to train the hip flexors. We're trying to train just the abs. So you wanna do a crunch or a curl up. You don't need to do a sit up. So that's my first pet peeve is you, uh, always doing sit ups. And then like at the top of the sit up too, you like relax. Let me see if I can bring a picture. Look at this guy. Our sit-up's bad for you. Look, this guy just went all the way to the very top and he's just sitting there. Okay, there's no tension under his abs anymore. He's fully flexed and he gets to rest, and that's just not good. So let's let's not do sit-ups, shall we? Let's do curl-ups. The next one that I have a problem with, let's see, almost every standing hip flexion based movement. Oh yeah, this is true. Let me see if I can find some on this one. This is actually interesting. She's using the, the rowing ergometer in place of the slider. Like the, instead of using her socks and sliding along a hardwood floor or using the slider, she's using that. Let me see if I can get to this article as like crunches and sit-ups. Let me see. Oh, this is stupid. Oh gosh. Okay, so if, see if you guys can see what's wrong with this picture, okay? Like she's she's clearly like getting some ab involvement, but she's just rocking, okay? It's not gonna do anything. And then this, this 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 is where this like this article has so many different exercises, and I just wonder what the hell they're doing. So they're doing bridges, which bridges works your butt muscles. It's not work your front of your. And then they do a hollow hold. It's like just do the hollow hold right there. Boom! Stop right there. Just do the hollow hold. Waste of movement. This, she's doing downward dog, which is yoga, and she's doing some kind of weird kickback, okay? It's just all extra movement. It looks cool, it's kind of fun to do, but when you're trying to get the most bang for your buck and be the most efficient as you can possibly be, you don't have time for all these extraneous movements. You just need to just focus on the crunching and the leg lifting and so on and so forth. This one's not too bad, she's reaching back here. This one, you can see she's trying to do the same thing you could do with the Swiss ball, but she's using a yoga thing. It's just like, if you have that yoga wheel, go for it, but I don't know. I'm trying to get to the standing exercises. I think they're on the next page. Yeah. Uh, Turkish get up. I, she's she's doing a half get up. Maybe a half get up is not a bad idea, but doing a Turkish get up is a terrible idea because most people suck at those exercises. This is tra traditionally done with the kettlebell in your hand. She's got this little tiny weight. That's probably for the best. Uh, here we go. Oh, here we go. The standing exercises. I'm excited because these suck. <laughs> they're fun to watch. Okay. Oh, let's see what Margie says. I think Margie says, are they making up exercises as they go along? Yes, Margie, they totally are. There's totally people that are literally making up exercises as they go along. They're like, well, let's see, what's what, the, the crunch isn't very sexy. What's what's more exciting than the crunch? Hmm, let's do some, let's do it. Like, what, and what about people who can't lay down? Because I've, I've, I have trained clients who can't, they have orthostatic intolerance. So they can't lay down. They can only do standing exercises. Well, there's only so many that we can do that are effective. And they say, well, do you have anything more? I'm like, well, not really, because like anything else is a lot easier or it uses a lot of equipment. So anything where you're standing is kind of a joke. And if you're not using like an implement, like a, like, look at this girl. What is this? This is a dance move. This is not an ab exercise. Yeah, you like, yes, this is, she's doing hip flexion, which is, I, I, don't, I don't know what she's doing with her arms. The arms is just totally not necessary. It's just kind of like measuring how far her legs go up. Yep, useless. This one, nice try, buddy. Extenders, I, I don't know what he's doing. Basically, what I, what I have on my list here in my notes, it says almost every standing hip flexion based movement is way too easy. Most of them are dance moves. It's true, they are. <laughs> like, this is more like an aerobics class. They're going high, low, high, low, what, what, whoa, whoa, where am I going? It's like, okay, yeah, like obviously anytime you're moving around this way, you're gonna engage your abs, but it's much better to focus. Like I'd rather have you do a crunch 
where you're laying down on the floor and you're rotating in a circle like this. They call them circle crunches. And you can go back this way and back that way. Scott's done them. Scott, Scott Science has done them. I don't think he likes them. But you could just do, you know, you do the rotation crunch like this. Ooh, got a good crack there. Or you can get up and go around. Okay, back to the exercise back to the dancing you know i don't know what these these, these people got good endurance they've been going the whole time now this one this one's actually an interesting exercise it's it's not a bad exercise in fact i mean look look all this equipment you need you need a landmine attachment which which i have at home i, ha I have one of those barbells right over there actually and i've done this one but it's like She's doing it wrong. <laughs> she's going all the way down to her leg and she's doing one side. She should just stop as soon as she feels like she needs to be able to resist it, but she shouldn't like rest it down at your leg. I mean, once you get past halfway here, uh, you don't really need to go down any further because you've already twisted as much. Like look, look at how much she's bending her knee. And this is the thing is like, people want to do these big exaggerated movements. You don't need to, your abs are so small. Look at the size of your abs. Look at these things. But, I mean, okay, that's, that's enough of the naked lady. Let's get this guy, he's new. No, that's the same guy, whoops. Look at this, look at this guy. Look how small his little abs are. You think those things can move like four feet? I mean, or three feet? Like, th look, how, look how large of a movement this is. It's just not necessary, so. And uh, what, what the hell is this? This guy's like climbing up a wall. I mean, is this the best they got? This is just them throwing, these aren't like, these are like functional, those functional exercises I was talking about before, the fancy functional stuff, where it's like, unless you're specifically training to do things like a handstand, there's no re reason to train it. This is all shoulders. And yeah, it uses the abs a little bit, but you need the, you use abs for everything. And this is just, I don't know what the hell this guy's, he's doing knee jumps, knee tucks. Really, this is just this is shocking his joints. This is what I told you guys not to do earlier to protect your knees. Yeah, you can do plyometrics if you got really good soft landing, but this isn't doing shit for you. It isn't doing anything, excuse me. is isn't doing anything for your, pardon my French. It's not doing anything for your abs. This guy's doing a drinking bird. Now that's for your posterior chain. That's for working out the glutes in the lower back. Again, stupid. Here's the, here's the uh, wheelbarrow. You guys ever seen a wheelbarrow? Let's see, turn off the audio here. Wheelbarrow where the one guy hangs onto the other. Oh, this is, I love the partner exercises. Oh, this is stupid. Oh my God. Oh, this is great. Oh yeah, oh, okay, you feeling the burn? Oh gosh, it's so bad. Oh, I don't know if I can keep passing you this water bottle. Oh, we're having so much fun. Oh my God, if I ever, if I ever seen somebody do this in the gym, that would be, I would just, I wouldn't be able to help myself. I would just start laughing in their face. Wheelbarrows, this is guy definitely is doing a, okay, these are all just partner exercises, but still. They, they mentioned the wheelbarrow specifically. High, low rotation. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Plank jumps. Oh, let's see what this has got to be rich. Oh, that's really dangerous. Okay, let me just land on your lower back. Where do people come up with this stuff, man? <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't even look at this full list because like I just going through and I was like, oh my God, they're all so bad. Now here's a good one. This is the one that Willie was recommending, the, the, the knee tucks. But again, it's not body weight exercise. Oh, here we go. Sneaky ab exercises. Okay, so I thought those other ones were sneaky. <laughs> Kettlebell swings, you gotta be kidding me. This, she's got the band helping her get up. Like what, this is all kettlebell. A lot of these are just kettlebell exercises, bear crawls. This is all extra movement. You don't need this extra stuff. So this is the problem I have with group fitness classes is I don't have like a problem with group fitness classes, but all the extra movements in there are just designed to make you feel tired. And it's like, you're, if you're just targeting the abs, you don't need to work, get your whole body workout. I, I get that you wanna work out your whole body, like some people like the full body workouts and stuff like that. But if you're so tired from doing a bear crawl that you can't do the rest of your crunches and stuff like that, then it's just holding you back. You're you're distracting yourself from the, your actual goals. I don't know what this is. What, high pull lateral lunge, are you kidding me? This one's actually not bad. I actually have something similar to these. Does he have the ones I have by Rogue Fitness? Those are actually good for like if you were to try to do an L sit where you put your legs out in front of you. But good God, sometimes I just, I don't know. Anything with kettlebells does not automatically make you have a rock solid core. I don't get why people think that. I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this now because uh, if I think I look at it anymore, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I don't know if it's boring for me to just shit on people. Uh, constantly, but that's that's the idea behind it. Let me go back here to my stream. Okay. <laughs> oh wow. So let's just let's just make sure I covered everything before we're done here. Okay. Oops. Sorry, I hit the wrong wrong button here. Okay. Oh boy, I almost forgot my favorite my favorite one. The partner wheelbarrows. 
Red ball rushing twist. Oh, so like mountain climbers. I want to talk about that one, and then we'll we'll end with the good one here. So mountain climbers, mountain climbers. Okay, this is just a whole bunch of hip flexion that you do rapidly. Okay, let me see if I can get a tools type gif. It's just designed to exhaust you, okay? Doing this, yes, it works the abs a little bit, but you're gonna be so tired from bouncing with your legs, you're gonna be just gassed, and you're and like, there's so many other ab exercises you could do instead. Although, I'll throw this in there sometimes just to, let's see if we can do a twisting one. This might be a twisting piston we're about to see, I'm not sure. No, it's not loading, doesn't matter. Yeah, don't do, don't do mountain climbers for ab days. Do mountain climbers when you're trying to do cardio. And again, cardio is one of the best things you can do for abs. So in a, in a weird way, that is a good ab exercise to do mountain climber because if you're doing ab, if you're doing a bunch of cardio, you're gonna lose more weight and lose more fat and you'll be able to see your abs. So technically, it's not a bad idea. But you shouldn't do it directly for direct ab work, okay? You shouldn't count that as your ab training, okay? So next up we got, let's see, the, oh, the, the, the side bend. Now this is the one that's hilarious. Side bend workout. Okay, it's not that bad of an exercise, but like, let's see this guy, this artificial guy do it, okay? He's bending from side to side with dumbbells in his hands. Now where is this training the abs? It's not. It's training a little bit of the obliques, but mostly it's training the posterior core. It's challenging that much more than the front side, the anterior side, which is the front. Your quadratus lumborum, that's what this is training, tra training, quadratus lumborum. If you guys don't know what a quadratus lumborum is, let me show you. Okay, this is looking at from, okay, it's gonna spin for us. If you look at behind the behind here, that green muscle, that's your quadratus lumborum. It literally goes from the top of your hips, okay, the iliac crest of your hips, and it inserts onto your that first rib there. <coughs> Technically, that's the last rib, not the first rib, but you know what I'm saying. Um, let's see if we can find a better picture here. That's what you're working, okay? So, if you're gonna do a dumbbell side bend, strengthen, do it to strengthen your lower back, don't do it to strengthen your, or don't do it to get work on that muffin top. It's not gonna do jack crap for your muffin top. And just like that, that is all of the exercise. Sorry, I didn't see you guys. I didn't see that you can see. My bad. I'll go back. I was so close to being done, I was like, let me just do a control shift T here. This is your quadratus lumborum in green, okay? See this thing? From the top of the iliac crest to this, the, some of the, not the false ribs, I think that's just the, the very first rib that you encounter right there. It also attaches to your deep spine. This is one of those deep spinal muscles that'll help your lower back, okay? Here's another view. The QL, as it's called, quadratus lumborum. That is what you're working instead of the muffin top. So if you want to, let's see if we can get an anterior view here. Anterior view would be from the front. Okay, here's from the front. Okay, so I get it. You're trying to target right here, which is float, you know, like your muffin top would be floating in front here, but actually this muscle's in the back. So when you're doing a dumbbell side bend, and I'll show you that, I guess, I, I don't know if I, dumbbell side bend. Uh, sorry, I, I, I didn't realize that it wasn't visible for you guys before. Okay, this guy, oh, that's terrible because he's, he's bending his whole body. A lot of people do the dumbbell side bends too and they move their hips and it's like, what are you doing? Dumbbell side bend, let me see if I can get a GIF. Tools, type GIF. I was showing you this artificial guy before, let me see if I can find a better example though. Let's see if this girl is doing it right. Okay, CrossFit girl, I get it, you're shredded. You're like, yeah, I feel it in the side. It's like, you're feeling it, but it's like, even though it works a little bit of the obliques, it's actually working the back too. So it's like evenly distributing between the back and the front. And if you're just trying to target just the obliques, you wanna shut off those extra helper muscles. You don't want your quadratus lumborum kicking in. You just want the internal and external oblique. Uh, that, that's labeled wrong, by the way. That's not your external oblique. Well, okay, the external oblique technically does run down uh, a little bit further and overlaps the internal oblique, which is slightly deep to the external oblique. But really, if you're trying to show off the external oblique, you should show it being continuous with the serratus anterior. So you have your serratus anterior here, and it runs down like that. But anyways, that doesn't matter. Okay, well, anyways, I hope that guy that helps clarify some things for you guys. It's been about two hours, so I guess I did, we, did go, we did go the full time. So I'm sorry if we... Went too long. Let's see. Um, I'm not trying to go that. I'm trying to go this. But yeah, that should be uh, sufficient for today. I think we covered a lot of the things I wanted to cover. Let me just make sure. Uh, yep, looks good.
show us on a cadaver. I could. Do you have a dead body that I could borrow? Let me know. I will. I will show you. You supply the cada the cadaver. I'll supply the knowledge. Oh, thanks, Jim. I like it. Oh, I like my own comment. No, wait. Okay, so that was just a small portion from one of my two to three hour long Facebook live streams. If you guys wanna catch one of my streams, follow my page on Facebook at facebook.com slash one life to lift. Go ahead and give it a like and you'll get notified whenever I go live. If you like this kind of content, check out the other clips I have on my stream clips playlist here on YouTube. And if there's a topic you'd like me to expand on, sound off in the comments down below. If it's something that I can answer quickly, I'll respond in the comments. But if it's a bigger topic, I may even make it a video in the future uh, for my YouTube channel or just uh, do a stream on it. I'm always looking for new suggestions since there are so many juicy topics to cover. And as always, make sure to subscribe for more of these videos and I'll catch you in the next clip coming right up.